A hurricane makes landfall in a desert country for the first time on record, while flowers bloom a third of a world away in one of the driest places on Earth. Two distant and seemingly unrelated events that actually share a common thread, both linked to anomalously warm ocean water, which right now dominates the globe. Here's a two-month animation of sea surface temperatures. The yellows, oranges, and reds represent warmer than average water, most extensive in the northern hemisphere, where these waters have helped fuel 27 category three or stronger hurricanes this year, way above the old record of 20. And one of those 27 was Cyclone Chapala this past week in the Arabian Sea, which took advantage of the warmest waters on record for this time of year there to reach category four strength, making it the second strongest storm in at least the last 25 years in that body of water. As Chapala neared the Arabian Peninsula, it ingested dry air from land and weakened, coming ashore Tuesday at Category 1 strength in Yemen before dissipating, the first hurricane strength storm to make landfall in that country since at least the 1940s. Coastal regions of Yemen average just two to four inches of rain a year, and this storm dumped many times that in a day, causing catastrophic flooding and adding insult to injury in a country already in the grips of a civil war. Landfalling storms of hurricane strength on the Arabian Peninsula are very rare. In fact, I could only find two besides Chapala in the last 25 years, and both hit Oman. Ganu in 2007 was the only Category 5 strength storm on record in the Arabian Sea. Eight time zones and 8,000 miles away, anomalously warm waters have had a different impact. The Atacama Desert in Chile, one of the driest places on Earth, is awash in color after unusual rains back in March allowed seeds and bulbs that had been dormant for years to germinate and flower. Those downpours that produced this flowering desert that officials say is the most spectacular in 18 years were at least in part fueled by unusually warm ocean waters just offshore that are linked to the ongoing El Nino. Another very dry place, Death Valley, California, also received unusual rains this year. In fact, last month, likely juiced by unusually warm Pacific waters that are not directly related to El Nino. But in Death Valley, the impact has not been pretty. Instead, two flash floods, one on October 18th when three inches fell in just five hours, destroyed large portions of roads, water and power lines, and heavily damaged a visitor center. A river reappeared in Death Valley, submerging the usually open salt flats at the aptly named Badwater. Paul Knight mentioned El Nino last night in his winter outlook, and with it expected to persist through the winter, you'll certainly be hearing more about El Nino in coming weeks. Fred is back next with the extended forecast.